It is time for another live game of StarCraft 2. And what I got for you today is a match that I am playing at the exact same time as I'm also giving commentary to it. Now, we are playing on one of the new maps. It is called Proxima Station. I was going to call it Paladino Terminal right there for a second. But it is indeed Proxima Station. And this map is a little bit interesting in the sense that you have a rather easy to get third base. And one of the things I've been playing on this map is rather than focus on like Zerklings and Banelings, is actually make a lot of Roaches as well. Like the Roach Ravager kind of style seems surprisingly good on a map like this one because the rush distances and the tight chokes and whatnot are rather small so for the most part it seems like you can make your way across the map really easily and you can quite easily maneuver around the map as well to defend against incoming dropships and all that kind of shenanigans which is usually the main weakness of a roach based play now of course this is something that i haven't been practicing nearly as much as the zirking baneling based style uh, so bear with me, I'm gonna try my very best here to show you exactly what I mean with that. Now, we'll go ahead, oh, I already did give him the GLHF. Apparently my opponent is not one to give the GLHF, that's okay. That is alright, I sometimes end up forgetting that as well, not a big deal. Um, but basically the main difference is that, instead of like trying to defend against, for example, the 16 Marine drop with Zerklings and Banelings, and mostly Queens then as well, we end up defending it with Roaches and a bunch of Queens, and um, usually, as that is the most common strategy, it works out just fine, as you can indeed get your roaches out in time, as well as have a suitable amount of economy to follow it up with a whole bunch of units. Now, the nice thing as well, is that a lot of Terran players, as of late, have been favoring, like, factory with reactor openers. Basically, they go for a barracks early on, get a reaper, get a factory, and then a reactor on the barracks that they produce their reaper with, and then very quickly as a follow-up, they can start double pumping out Hellions, and this used to be a strategy really popular back in the day, uh, nowadays, it's not nearly as common anymore, but it is starting to become a little bit more popular once again. And I would say I face it probably like one in three games or so, uh, with the other one just being the good old 16 Marine drop. So we'll see exactly what our opponent got planned for us today. Since this is a small map, I don't really need the early game Zerkin speed, so I'm going to favor uh, getting the, um, the Overlord speed here. Um, or rather, the four queens over the Overlord speed, so that way I should be able to still defend against most stuff. And here indeed is that first... Ooh, it's actually a little interesting. He's not producing anything out of it just yet. No, it's already here. Okay. I was going to say, I'm not seeing a follow-up from it just yet, no? So no marine follow-up or no shenanigans here whatsoever. I may end up losing a zirkling or two. That's not too big of a deal. But I will be able to start making a, quite a lot of units here. So he's actually not producing anything here. Very interesting. Not entirely sure what he's meaning to do with that. Did get the Reaper there. He overextended, so that's very good. And that means that I can start up my second queen here in the other base as well. So there indeed we do see the factory follow up. Now, I am going to leave my overlord hanging out there for just a little while while taking my third base. I'm not sure what he's doing though because I'm not seeing a whole lot as... Okay, okay. I was going to say, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to see here. But we do see the reactor follow up here eventually. And then another barracks as well. So the roach play should still be on point. So what I'll go ahead and do is add on my third base here. Start spreading some creep here as well. And that is the point right around three and a half minutes or so where I'm going to pick up both an evolution chamber as well as a roach worn after getting that third base going. Right now I've got four queens done already, which is very good. We can drone for a little while longer. And very shortly after that roach worn finishes up, I'm going to be in a very nice position to defense against pretty much any kind of incoming aggression. So notice, right? We're playing still very similar to, like, for example, the Zerking Baneling style. It's just a little bit more technical, because while we do have Zerking speed, and I'm going to indeed make a bunch of links here very shortly, um, we don't really... Actually, I don't think I'm going to make a bunch of links. Well, we make a, we'll make a few, but regardless, like, we're doing a very similar kind of approach here, but we are playing it out slightly differently in the sense that we're just getting a different set of units here. Uh, but still the same timings, I guess, as far as those units go. So I'm still trying to squeeze out a few workers here and there as well. Uh, just so I can really start affording a reasonably a be a reasonably big army here. Uh, and of course, that means that I can also start saturating the gases at my natural. I'll go ahead and get a spore crawler in each of those bases, as there is a chance indeed that my opponent will go for some uh, aggression here with the with the uh, starport that we saw him build. And with these gases, we can easily try and indeed get that out as well. So there indeed my opponent does start moving. Maybe a yeah, it is indeed a widow mine drop. Which is fair. Because it will end up falling here anyway. There's a lot of different options that he has, but the nice thing is that you can counter pretty much all of them with the exact same strategy. Okay. Not bad. Lost one Ling there.
And with that in mind, we can start up pretty much whatever we like here. I mean, I've got a very clear situation now of what I can be building. It looks like he's just adding on more barracks here himself. Quite a lot of them, as well as an armory and an engineering base. So we scouted those pretty much instantaneously. So that means that I'm just going to make drones here. I'm just going to make drones, drones, drones. Get myself as many upgrades as I can. I will push once we are indeed having that road speed upgrade. And then also, uh, more than likely, plus one, plus one. Roughly finishing up around the same time. So as far as my gas timings go, I'm adding them on when I hit full base saturations. So basically what I mean with that is that I'm adding them on um, either when... My natural was fully saturated, or when my other bases were fully saturated as well. Don't know where one of my queens went. Doesn't really matter either. Oh, there she went. I was gonna say. She decided to wander off on her own. I must have told her to go there. So right now, for example, I've got that base saturated. That is the timing where I'm gonna indeed start up uh, the gases here as well. And I am already producing some workers again, or some uh, units again, as I already have got the full saturation ready to go. So, yeah, very nice. All right, we may end up losing one drone, but that's not too big of a deal. And right now we can start like a stupid amount of production. Right now we have got so much gas income as well that we can start up the Ravagers. And I set up myself for a really nice timing attack here, which I've been enjoying a lot. As on this map, like I said, you know, you can close the distance very easily with your units. And as soon as my road speed upgrade finishes up here in the natural, these plus one attack upgrades and plus one armor right now is already done on these roaches, uh, which helps out a, gut, uh, a lot against, for example, siege tank play and stuff. I will be able to set myself up for a really powerful timing attack. So it looks like he is actually moving out now, which is perfect for me. I'll get a bunch of ravages here already, just because my opponent is indeed moving out and he's got siege tanks. My siege tanks are really weak against, for example, corrosive biles. So if I can get a bunch of them out, that would be very nice for me. He may be going for a drop in the main. No, it looks like he's not. And I've been producing non-stop units, right? So we're sort of like blind countering his aggression. I was planning to move out here myself. But instead, we have figured out that my opponent is going for a push. I mean, I can walk some of my roaches around as well. Just to pick up any kind of reinforcements. He's actually going to try and move home. Not on my watch! You can see I've got a stupid amount of units here, ready to deal with all of the aggression. He is forced to pick up and get on out of there, and as a follow-up, I'll go ahead and get myself a hive here as I want to, as well as a fourth base, because there are of course still siege tanks out. Siege tanks are still amazing at cleaning up armored units, like for example roaches, but with a few corrosive vials. We should be able to kill that. He doesn't have a third yet, right? Which is a really important thing here. I think I may even be able to just simply push onwards here. I mean, we're killing so many things. I'm just gonna push. He does have a third finished up now in his base. We'll get up to watch the hive here. And I'll start upgrading my melee upgrades here as well. So I can start floating some Zerklings too, but I think I may very well be able to like finish this one up here already. I mean, we're doing so much damage here to his like units and all that. But he still has Roaches though, so it may not finish up just yet. But I've got my melee upgrades coming in, which will be very good as I can start switching into like, for example, uh, Ravagers. Or for example, uh, Ultralisk, I can switch into, uh, for example, more Zerklings. I can go to, uh, for example, Brute Lords. And you can clearly see, right, that... I sometimes have people ask, right, like, what is a go-to, relatively easy build order to execute? And obviously we're playing against pretty high-level opponents here, so, you know, it's not like this was particularly easy for me. But if you manage to nail down, like, your, your drone timings, right, and you manage to get your army at the correct timing as well, and you can easily split off your units to deal with incoming drop play, I mean, I didn't do anything special this game, I just kept my resources low and got my drones at the correct timing, and... It turns out that we can easily run over master level players, if indeed it is going to be executed correctly. Now, of course, that is not to say that I'm playing it perfect every single time, and not to say that I was playing it perfect in this situation either. But it does certainly showcase you that road styles 
are most definitely still a viable option. Um, as, you know, some people may not like playing Ling Bane all too much, and I would say on like a skill level, or like of, of, of just a very basic skill um, and, and micro and, and macro level, the Zerking, Baneling, and Mutalisk style is much more difficult to execute as this, as I don't need as much Larva, um, and on top of that, like, I can just simply get away with less Queen Injects because of that, and then spend my resources easier as well, because I can just make Roaches, which are far more expensive than Zerklings and Banelings are. Anyway, long story short, Roach Bane style, or the Roach Ravager style, rather. Very powerful, very fun to play. In particular, as sort of like a mix-up uh, from your standard strategies. And as you may have noticed, like my switch uh, to Ultras was already on the way. I started adding on Zerklings. I wanted to just start up a Baneling Nest as well. So, as you may have noticed, my opponent really started building uh, a lot of Marauders in particular. And, of course, Zerklings. In particular, with the Adrenal Glance upgrade, absolutely shut that down. Anyway, for now, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And on top of that, you can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next one.